first food safety myth that I'd like to boost, maybe not a safety one, but it's one that's on people's minds, and that's that low calorie sweeteners make you fat. That's um, actually biologically implausible because low calorie sweeteners are used in foods at such a tiny level because they are so, so sweet that by definition, all of the calories that, from the sugar that they replace um, is taken out of those foods. So for example, in a low calorie uh, cola, um, you're going from some 130, maybe 150 calories down to zero. There is no way, therefore, that that could make you fat. People think maybe that it's because it interferes with your metabolism, but actually most of the low calorie sweeteners are not metabolic. The answer to that is yes and no. Clean labelling means very, very different things, whether you're talking to somebody making food or those of us who eat food. Actually, as far as real people are concerned, um, what they tend to talk about is clean eating. And that's something that's perhaps relatively limitedly pr uh, processed, um, as near to natural as possible, and with as few perhaps manipulations to that, either by um, the processing itself or by adding things to it. So yes, you get lots of people saying that they'd like to get closer to real recipes, uh, ingredients that are in their store cupboard, um, and really close to home cooking. Right? That's clean eating. As far as clean labelling is concerned, that's become a business to business food industry term that seems to be about reducing the number of ingredients in a product, um, eliminating additives, but often confusing consumers with labelings about being natural or non-GM or additive free, whatever. Um, it's a little unfortunate because what we're getting now is a dialogue where the industry is talking about one thing, consumers are talking about something completely different, and the net effect is a great deal of confusion as far as people are concerned. Um, so yes, there is um, a necessity for food manufacturers to be able to justify whatever is in their products, how they make them, and why they use what they use to produce the food. Calling it clean label? I don't think so. Asked a lot, is there a difference between artificial and natural food ingredients? Well, maybe. Um, artificial, from most people's understanding, is something that has been man made that doesn't occur in nature. However, when once we come down to ingredients or indeed additives, the fact of the matter is that the vast majority of ingredients we use in our food supply to produce safe, um, tasty food are in some way manipulated, in some way processed. Even if it comes from a leaf, it will be processed in a manner such that it can be used to create these foods. So actually, what we're really dealing with at an ingredient level is the individual molecule. Now that molecule can come from a plant and be perfectly safe and effective. It can also come from a, a, a factory or manipulating that plant to become safe and effective. Many people see that uh, reformulation is a key strategy in producing healthier foods. 
However, reformulation is not easy. For some products, it is fairly straightforward. For example, in beverages, you can reduce the sugar in that product and get a reduction in calories by using high potency sweeteners. If you have a combination of ingredients, it becomes a greater challenge. And in fact, you can have the un unintended consequence of getting an increase in calories, or at the very best, the same calories in the product. This is because sugar delivers four calories per gram, and fat delivers nine, protein and other carbohydrates also deliver four calories per gram. So, for example, in breakfast cereals, if you take the sugar out, you replace the sugar with starch, and you have exactly the same caloric content. So the challenge is, how do you reformulate products to give a healthier product, which customers like and it tastes good? The myth I would like to boast is that monosodium glutamate is bad for you. Monosodium glutamate is a salt of an amino acid, and that amino acid we detect it specifically. We have a specific taste bud, umami. And glutamate, so monosodium glutamate, the sodium salt of glutamic acid. So glutamate is one of the essential tastes that tells us that we're eating protein. And glutamate is as essential to a savory food as sweet is to a sweet food. Imagine a cake without sugar you wouldn't eat it. Imagine a soft sweet without sugar. You would not eat it. Glutamate is as essential for savoury. If you don't have glutamate in a savoury product, you wouldn't eat it. It is the sugar of a savoury product.